Hello everyone, my name is Debbie Bebo and I'm a picture book agent and this is Storytime, where I read picture books by authors and illustrators we represent. Uh, so today's picture book is very special. Uh, as you can see, I've been doing some exploring and we're going to be doing some exploring together. So here's what um, we're going to need. Number one, first and foremost, we are going to need a compass. Look at that cool compass. So we're going to need a compass. And then, if you have them, this is necessary, if you have them, binoculars would be helpful. You need binoculars for exploring. Um, magnifying glass, not necessary, but if you have it, it'd be great. Uh, I don't know, maybe some string, not sure why, I just thought. Um, a walking stick would be good, walking stick. Backpack with all of the other necessary things. Okay, uh, so we shall begin. This is today's picture book. I'm just going to show you hmm? the cover, which is very special. Um, the first thing you notice about the cover is that there's no title. Do you think this book has a title? Look, no title. Well, what do you think it's called? Let's see. You guys have any idea? There is an explorer there. Look, can you guys see the explorer? show you. Isn't that a cool dust jacket? There's the Explorer. Let me take this off. But it's not called the Explorer. It's called something else. Yes, you got it. The Forest. The book is called The Forest. Let's begin. The Forest. Oops, sorry. The Forest by Ricardo Bozzi illustrated by Violetta Lopez and Valerio Vidali, translated from the Italian by me, Debbie Bibo, and published by Enchanted Lion Books. The dedication over here says, to my fellow explorers, that's what Ricardo Bozzi said, and Violetta and Valerio dedicated it to Claudia, and Claudia is the publisher of Enchanted Lion Books. It is an enormous ancient forest that has not yet been fully explored. Can you guys see what's there? This book is very, it's a very uh, tactile book, as you can see. We can feel there's holes. Can you guys see that? that's a little baby's face? In the beginning, the forest is a grove of young pine trees. It is usually free of danger and quite fun to wander through. If you can see, there's a little ladybug right there. It is said that the forest has a certain limit if you look straight ahead, but the sides are boundless. Here is where the explorers can venture with enjoyment and curiosity. Can you guys see in through the eyes of the little girl? Can you guys see what's in her eyes? What do you think is there? What do you think that is right there? That green. Let's see. It's a leaf, and the, other, yeah, and the other eye was the bee. In this phase, the explorers observe insects without noticing that dawn turns to dusk. What kind of insects do we see there? There's a butterfly, a bee. What else do you guys see? Have a look. They invent complicated games using rocks, numbers, branches, moss, words, and footsteps. Can you see her? She's upside down. What do you guys think she's doing? I wish you guys could touch this. It feels really nice. They sing songs that seem to go on forever until their throats go hoarse. Look at there's a the little girl. She's hanging upside down from a branch. Can you guys see that? With the monkeys. Every day, new explorers set out on solitary missions to experience the mysteries of the forest and to investigate its beauties and dangers. What kind of dangers lie ahead? Ah, what's inside the mouth? What's inside the little boy's mouth? Ah, a tiger, look at that. As they move forward, the forest grows thicker. It becomes more difficult to penetrate and more fascinating.
In this part of the forest, the explorers usually realize they are not alone after all, and that they are surrounded by other travelers. Look at, do you see there's one, this traveler here? There's another traveler there. From these encounters grow friendships, rivalries, see. saying, hey, friendships, rivalries, and sometimes, sorry, sometimes even loves. Look at this. This is kind of hard to see. But can you guys see? Oh, it's a bit hard to see there. But there are two faces there. Might be these two, these fellow travelers there. From early on, the explorers develop a curious habit. At night, they gather around the fire and tell each other stories to keep the animals and their own fears at bay. It's like they're dancing. Much like the animals that inhabit the forest, the explorers represent a variety of types. Tall, short, dark, light. And what do we see over here? What do we see over here? Can you guys see that? Mm. The universe. Isn't that cool? So we were saying, tall, short, dark, light, impulsive, Ferocious, mild, happy, sad, nervous, quiet. Let's see what's in this man's eyes. Some choose to help each other out, while others prefer to push on alone. Looks like, looks like this guy's pushing on alone. Can you see all the different travelers here along the way? In the thick of the forest? here too. Along the way, many explorers develop another peculiar habit. They take notes and carve them into stone or leave them rolled up in the hollows of trees. Can you guys see the notes that we're taking here? It's like hieroglyphics, huh? Like, you see that? Not only hieroglyphics, there's actually there's some animals there depicted. Oh, here, this looks like hieroglyphics here. You see. Some of these notes, though not all, are extremely important and will be treasured by future explorers. At this point, the forest is nothing but a tangle. You can see the explorers there. Oh, look at we forgot our flashlight. That's another thing we needed for this, a flashlight, right? So remember to pack your flashlight. Each step forward leads to scars and bruises, but as far as we know, there is no turning back. Can you see his face? Fortunately, now and again, a small clearing appears where the explorers can pause and rest. Isn't that a nice perspective? They must be lying down. Oh, look at these are the hands. The hands. Very cool. Sometimes, looking up, they glimpse the same shade of blue or green that they saw at the beginning of the journey. They smile and continue onward. There's our little explorer. In the final stretch, the forest becomes even more arid and barren. The climb is difficult, the last part nearly a vertical wall, but all of the explorers continue to climb diligently, regardless of the pain and hardship. Look at this guy's resting, going, going. There's another guy up there. At the end of the climb, there is a ravine into which each explorer will eventually fall despite the precautions taken and the advancement of science. Can you see her face? Let's see. Like that. 
What may lie beyond the forest, no one knows. Oops. Oh, this is difficult to see. Sorry about that. You can see the lines of her face. Some say there is a grove of young pine trees. The end. So that was the forest. Um, and I hope that you guys can go uh, explore forest or a park or just outside your house take a walk around on your own with your parents with friends um, meet other fellow uh, explorers along the way fellow travelers um, okay so before we go I gotta get out my my magnifying glass and who do I see out there who do I see I see Bill hi Bill I see Stacy. Hey, Stace. I see Elisa. I see Dave. I see. Who is that over there? Who is that? Oh, right. It's Pat. Hi, Pat. And over. I see Ricardo. And I see. Oh, I can't believe I see Arturo. Incredible. And. Oh my God, I see absolutely all geared up and ready to go. Has his hat on, has his binoculars. It's Henry. And I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.